Okay, I guess I can start. <laughs> okay, so good evening, everybody, and um, welcome to this webinar. And I have to confess, this is my first time doing this webinar, so it's not going to be super polished, but that'll be right in keeping with a lot of other webinars that are going on right now. Um, before we dive in, though, I do want to thank the Illinois Northwest Food Network and the University of Idaho um, Extension, who are really providing a lot of support in order to make this webinar happen. So thank you for your help. Um, my name is Terry McKenzie, and I'm going to be facilitating tonight's webinar. Um, some of you may know me as the founder of the Illinois Northwest Food Network, but um, a couple of years ago, I had to step away due to a lack of funding. And since that time, I've continued to stay involved um, in food systems work and stay connected to farmers, but I haven't really had any formal role. So um, anyway, I, I was thinking about the situation with the pandemic and, you know, I used to really enjoy going shopping. Like it was kind of, I was one of those people that enjoyed going and fondling the vegetables. Um, but then since the, since the, um, virus hit, I really found it to be pretty um, stressful, actually. It's not really fun for me to go shopping. Um, and so I, I just, it just feels like a chore. So, but now I'm getting excited because it's growing season again and um, feels like it's a time when I can go out and get food from directly from farmers. And I'm really excited about that. But even that, um, it's becoming really clear that things are not going to be the same for us even sourcing food from local farms as they used to be. Um, so, um, and I know from talking to various farmer friends of mine and producers that they've really had to do a quick pivot because at the, prior to the pandemic breaking out, um, people had already bought seeds and figured out how many animals they were going to have and had their timelines planned for planting and all of that's been well, that's all continued, but their ability to how they're going to distribute the food is really shifted in some cases. So um, I thought it might be helpful to create uh, host this webinar and help um, get the word out to people like me and other people who love local food to find how do we find this good food and um, what's it going to look like to be an eater shopping for local farm produce from small farms this year. So. Um, Anyway, I organized this. I had some great people who were willing to come forward and share their um, what they're doing this year. Um, so we're going to hear from each of them, five panelists tonight. And before we do that, though, I want to turn uh, this over to my colleague and friend, Colette DeFelps from the University of Idaho. And she's going to explain how this webinar is going to work from a technical perspective. Thank you, Terry. And thanks, everyone, for being on tonight. We're all sharing a lot of bandwidth right now with everyone working from home. So if at any time you experience your sound kind of getting garbled or slowing down or the slides are not transferring very fast, that could be because of your own bandwidth. If you have any questions about that, you can always type into the chat. We'll help you with any technical difficulties. So myself and my colleague Mackenzie Lawrence are online to support you in that way. You can always switch to the phone. There's a phone number in your welcome email. If you do that, mute your computer so you don't get feedback. You can type questions in for the Q&A session at any time during the webinar. Please type them into the question box. You should have both a question and chat box in your control bar, and it's a lot easier for us to manage the questions if they're in the Q&A box. So with that, I think that's all the webinar tips that I have. Great, thanks Colette. And we are gonna have a time at the end um, after all the people have spoken for you all to, um, for us to answer questions, whatever questions you have come up. And you can feel free to put those in, as Colette said, in the Q&A um, during, the, during the presentation if that helps you so you don't forget. So um, the first um, presenter that we have is Emily Black and she and her husband co-own Lone Mountain Farms. And Emily's going to share a really innovative idea that they came up with when they were suddenly confronted with having to pivot. So over to you, Emily, thanks. Thanks, Terry. Um, yeah, so I'm Emily. 
Uh, my husband and I started Lone Mountain Farms about seven years ago, and we grow produce. So that's kind of how we started. We started with the produce and then have since added grains. Uh, so we do specialty grains, we do hops, uh, we have laying hens, and then I'm starting flowers uh, as well. Um, with our farm, we actually do a we call it a value added, but we use all of our hops and grains and some of the produce to make farm craft beer. So that's another kind of a, an exciting product that we started about a year ago. So we are a pretty diverse farm. We kind of just keep following our passions and seeing what our customers are asking for and uh, just keep expanding as we need to. So this year we, um, are doing a CSA. It's actually the fourth year that we've been doing this. And a CSA stands for Community Supported Agriculture. So this is a great way to get local food. Um, there are a few different farmers in the area doing this. Um, our CSA, we actually call it a produce subscription because you, you're subscribing to weekly produce throughout the summer. So you actually purchase it in the spring. So you pay up front for a whole season of local food that's in season and it's whatever is perfect at that time. So we start it in mid-June and go through the end of September. Uh, the, we started out with a lot of greens and spring vegetables. And then as the seasons go forward, You'll get tomatoes and peppers and potatoes, carrots, um, and just a whole variety of different fresh local produce. We harvest it, we package it, and we even deliver or have farm pickup options. So I you know with COVID, a lot of our customers are sheltering in place or just staying home and being cautious. So we are meeting you where you are. Um, so we have actually started doing deliveries with our other products that we're doing, uh, like our farm craft beer, and we're actually doing stone milled flour now uh, from our grains as well. So if you need flour or local farm craft beer, um, we can definitely get it to you. So we're delivering to Coeur d'Alene and the surrounding areas. And then we have our farm stand here at the farm that we opened last fall so in october last year we opened that up and we had tastings and our produce and it was just a fun place for our community to come and get local produce um, now with the covid 19 we've shifted a little bit so instead of having you come into the farm stand we've actually moved it online so you just get right onto our website lonemountainfarms.com and you can shop right on the website. And then we package it for you. Uh, we go through our sanitization. So we sanitize everything. Um, everything's a new clean bag. There's no reused things. Um, just so we can make sure our safety protocols are on point. Um, so that's kind of how we've shifted with our farm stand during this time is everything's um, online. You can get it for delivery or do the farm stand um, pickup. So you can just drive up, text us, and we'll bring it right out to you. So you don't even have to get out of your car. Uh, so that's another opportunity for you. Um, in a couple weeks, we're actually gonna have our starts. So we're gonna have a lot of different plants available. Uh, so you can plant your own garden and make your own awesome local produce. Uh, and then we're also going to have additional options. So instead of being a part of the CSA, because that actually just sold out, so we don't have any more spots for that one, um, but we will have more produce and we might open up some more spots. So if you are interested in getting a weekly delivery of produce or just purchasing from us, um, get onto that website again, so LoneMountainFarms.com and sign up for our newsletter, because I will keep you in the loop on what's happening on the farm, what we're growing, what's available, and then how you can get it. So you can always be in the loop and know what's going on. Um, so with 
The last thing that we're doing, um, this is new as well, is the CDA Market Box. And this is actually a collaboration with other uh, food entrepreneurs in the area. So Mac Bread, they do sourdough, is in the box. Uh, Lucid Roots has fresh salads. They're delicious. Even if you don't like salads, those are amazing. So those are in there. Uh, Bean and Pie has hand pies. So those are in there, so, so good. And we also have a rotating local coffee roaster. So Doma or Evans Brothers and so forth. And then we have our farm craft beer in there. So it's a fun package of delicious locally sourced and made um, kind of meal, I guess, with all the bread and salad and ham pies and beer and so forth. So you do get a lot of goodness. Uh, that's a delivery as well. So we deliver every Friday to the Coeur d'Alene area. And uh, you can find out more about that one at cdamarketbox.com. And you can order there, you can order it uh, for the week, or we will be extending it uh, through May. So you can purchase it for a whole month as well and get a little bit of a discount. So those are kind of the different opportunities that you can get local produce from us. And with the CSA, again, there are other farmers out here. I know um, there's like a salad CSA uh, and so forth from different farmers. So uh, there's definitely opportunity to get on with other um, farmers as well. Um, but that's how you can get local produce and flour and uh, farm craft beer from us. Great. Thank you, Emily. Sounds lovely. Um, our next presenter is Betty Mobs. Um, she is the um, co well, she is a regenerative rancher along with her husband. I guess that's what I would say. I was going to say co-rancher, I don't know, co-owner of the Lazy JM Ranch. Um, and she's also a co-founder of a new program or project that she's going to be spoke, speaking about tonight called the Panhandle Farm Corridor, which we're really excited about. I've been working with this group of people to get this organized, and it's very exciting. So, Betty, over to you. <laughs> um, hello. Um, welcome to an upcoming venue. It is called the Panhandle Farm Corridor. And this is a brand new venue because we have been listening to our customers and our locals. Where are you? Where are these farms? Where, where is the beef? Where, where is the lettuce? And people don't know how to find us. And so the purpose of the Panhandle Farm Corridor is that we are a collective of small farms showcasing agricultural products grown right here in the panhandle of North Idaho. We want to share our love of farming with our community and to give our community a chance to enjoy farm fresh food and products produced right here in your backyard. And so um, start looking for us um, on Facebook. We have a Facebook page, the Panhandle Farm Corridor. We also will have an upcoming uh, website, uh, obviously with the Panhandle Farm Corridor. And we um, are going to have some beautiful um, signs. I don't know, if um, Colette, if this is a good time to kind of show our brand for the um, Panhandle um, Farm Corridor. But we're going, so far we have about 14 farms from um, Kootenai to into Shoshone. And I'm going to highlight those farms right now. So the first farm is the McCur Archer Family Farm. It is um, located at Carrywood, And they offer um, free, I'm sorry, free, free range eggs, um, baked goods, soap um, products, um, pork, produce, and handcrafted items, and they are at Carrie Wood. The next one is the Art Family Farm, and um, they, I'm sorry, the, the first farm was um, produce and broilers. Everybody's looking for fresh chickens, meat chickens, everybody is. 
Um, also, we, there is the um, Arts Family Farm, um, owned and operated by Ruben and Josie, and they are have the free range eggs, baked goods, soap, seasonally pork produce, handcrafted items, and then we um, also have um, we're pleased to um, have the Lone Mountain Farm, which um, you met Emily a bit earlier. And you know about all the wonderful things they're offering, which is um, eggs, beer, flowers, something for the ladies, something for the men, flour, um, mm -hmm. baking flour, and grass-fed. Oh, that's, that is me. I'm, my um, Google is <laughs> pretty small here. <laughs> and then there's a Lazy Jam Ranch, um, grass-fed beef, and we're going to offer farm tours so we can teach our locals about regenerative ag. We are passionate about regenerative ag, and, and farm tours are par um, part of understanding what's all involved when you work with nature and not against it. Against it. Then we have the wonderful Apple Orchard. Um, of Nikki Connolly, and she has apples, syrups, um, baked goods, and farm fresh eggs too. And she's located at um, Ethel, and she has um, her specialty is also um, bringing life to heritage, heritage um, apple trees. Um, and she is so passionate. If you go to her site, there's always something wonderful to read about agriculture. Then we have the Green Tree Natural, and that's um, Diane Green, and she has produce. We have the Killarney Farms. I think they are famous, and they um, are, um, as Terry has reminded me, they are the oldest organic farm um, in the area. Um, what, what a, I salute that, that dedication in being a pioneer uh, to take us to clean food, to have clean food offered to us. The Prairie Home Farm, they are famous for their pies and pumpkins, and that is um, by Linda Swenson. Um, my own favorite, of course, my son Travis and his wife Jessie, and our three grandchildren, who are the Roots Project Farm. They have a um, sub herd of Red Angus in our, with our herd, and they also have lamb, and they have um, pastured pork, pastured um, meat hens, and pastured eggs, um, the Roots Project Farm. And then again, right next door to us is um, our lovely niece and husband, Halger Lake Thurman Family Farm. They have grass-fed, and you can choose a grain-finished beef. They have pork chicken, eggs, bread, and you can get firewood and hay at their stop. And then um, you have um, the, well, we have a lot at this um, south side of um, Kootenai County at the Halger Lake area. We have the Red Canoe Farm. I highly recommend go to their website, read their story, how they were named. It's a wonderful um, love story. Um, blueberries, they have blueberries, and they have hay and alfalfa too, and that is owned and operated by Steve and Lisa Pointer. And then we have the Tarbeth Alpalca and Fiber Far Farm by, um, oh boy, Tara Best and Jerlin, and they're located at Crease River. I can already see a, a whole Saturday drive. Um, and then the Riley Creek Blueberry Farm, blueberries, and that is owned by Yerman, Stan Yerman. And then we have just added, and are excited to add the Castle Rock Ranch at Kingston, Idaho, owned and operated by Jordan Shea and her husband, Albert Wash. And they offer the um, Coeur d'Alene River beef grass-fed, grass-finished beef, but they also are in the business of hospitality. If you want to go to a cow girl or cow camp and learn how it's done. So those are the um, 
farms, producers, ranches that have been have signed up. We do anticipate more uh, ranches and farms. Um, the four core founders, um, the coordinator is Emily Black. I am the secretary. Lisa Pointer is the treasurer. And uh, marketing is Nikki Connolly, along with working with Emily. And our events um, person is Terry McKenzie. We have been working some in person, a lot in Zoom, and we are dedicated to let you know who we are, where we are, and how we can um, provide fresh produce and fresh um, beef and pork and um, meat chickens and eggs for your table at your place. Um, be looking for us in publications. We'll probably have articles in the Corning Press, the Spokesman's Review, the Inlander, no pressure, Terry. We'll be patient with these articles. Um, we're, we applied for a mini grant, and so we're, we're dreaming about beautiful signs that are going to look like the uh, logo that we have here with a slightly different color palette, but Panhandle Farm Quarter, you'll want to get this map and where we're at. We're, we are so excited to create this venue during a quarantine time of unprecedented times of 2020. Know your farmer, love your farmer. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. That was great. Um, okay, we're going to um, me uh, Betty mentioned that one of the uh, one of the people that's going to be participating in the Panhandle Farm Corridor project is um, Lisa and Steve Pointer um, with Red Co Canoe Blueberry Farms. So now we're I'm excited to introduce um, Lisa, who's generously agreed to tell us about how what, what you can do with blueberries in their place. Good evening, I am Lisa Pointer and my husband Steve and I, we and our children also, it was a very much a family effort. We planted our bushes in 2010 and we're on Highway 53, uh, very close to the state line. The bushes are all fenced because there's lots of elk out there. We planted eight varieties and they ripen from the driveway side from west to east so from the driveway side then to the east eastern edge of our property and they're excellent berries we love having our customers come out people love to be out in nature picking their own food and so we look forward to 2020 and we know that there will be some changes that need to come because of the virus, but we're very thankful that we're outside and there's lots of space and lots of room for people to pick in. So some of the things that are going to change a little bit on our farm is we're going to make sure that we have two hand wash stations that are very accessible and very visible. We'll also have ham sanitizer. We will ask our customers to please wash their hands before they start picking berries. And social distancing, we don't anticipate it being a big problem, but there might be that we need to assign areas for picking. We've never told people that they need to pick in a certain area before on the farm. We've just let pick people pick where they wanted and the varieties that taste best to them because the varieties do taste a little bit different and everybody likes different varieties and some people like to mix and some people like just to pick in one certain area. So we will just try to be very accommodating with what people want for their berries and also be very careful and cautious to practice according to CDC guidelines. We will have signs out. We will have messages on Facebook, Instagram, and on our website asking people that are sick not to come to the farm to pick berries. We do offer already picked berries and we have great pickers 
who pick for us, they already practice really clean hygiene. They wash their hands before they ever pick, and they wash between buckets, and they wash after every break session, and they go out there and they pick great berries for people. And so we will still offer those. And we will um, either come out to the car or set up a separate area where people can come when they want to purchase berries that have been already picked. It may be that we will need to offer longer hours. It may be that we possibly will need to offer signups online. We're not sure how it will be come July when our berries ripen, but we will follow guidelines and we'll be careful and practice careful practices and safe practices and encourage those who come to our farm to do the same. We're thankful that we can eat and pick our own fresh food. We know where it comes from. And like all the rest of these farms, we're just so very glad that we live here where we can get wonderful fresh produce that tastes so good. So we are very much looking forward to this next season and hope to see you on the farm. Great. Thank you, Natalie. That, I mean, thank you, Lisa. That sounds like a really fun family kind of activity to do when people want to get out and and I don't know whether, you didn't say anything about whether people are allowed to taste while they're picking, but I know I always am guilty of that, so. <laughs> yes, we have um. always said we don't weigh people in and out. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> okay. Um, so next, we I'm pleased to welcome Natalie Selby. She is uh, has the task, the onerous task, I might say, of being the Kootenai County Farmers Market Manager this year. Um, that's already a huge job normally under normal conditions, but this year because of the virus, there's uh, probably many of you have heard through the news media that their farmers markets have been asked to um, do quite a bit of adjusting to, in order to keep um, market goers safe. So um, Natalie, if you'd like to share with us how the Kootenai County Farmers Market is planning to run your operation this year, that would be great. Sure. So I um, I wanted to actually. Do you mind going back back one screen again? <laughs> I I wanted to first talk about what the mar what the market is doing to uh, create a safe shopping environment. Um, and so we have stopped some of our day vendors from coming. So you'll probably see about half of the vendors that we typically have. Uh, normally we have about 100. Now we're expecting between 50 and 60. Um, a lot of those will be our agriculture vendors. And uh, we have some of our vendors that are crafters and they can use your support. And so if people are looking for things other than <laughs> food, check our website and uh, hopefully they'll, they'll have their websites listed there if you are looking for some of your favorite vendors. Um, other things that we're doing are trying to limit the number of customers in the market at a time just so that we can maintain social distancing. So there may be a line to get in and out. We are asking um, people to just be patient as we kind of figure out what the market can handle and keep the social distancing. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention is just that we're working on a curbside pickup. Um, so that people can order online prior to market and then pick up on market days. Um, and then it, now, if you don't mind going to the next slide now. Uh, so how can the customers help the market? Um, we've posted this on our Facebook page, but wanted to kind of reiterate it here. So as we go through, like get in and get out as quickly as possible. You don't have to come alone, but don't bring your whole you know, 20 person family, just kind of treat it like a grocery store instead of the event that we're all used to the market being. Um, and then the number number two, where we're asking you to pre-order. So watch our, um, because this is all so new, we are still getting our curbside pickup program in place, but watch the Facebook page and the, our website, um, and then sign up for our fresh sheet. And all, all three of those venues will have our information on it. Um, 
Number three, that's not abnormal information. We don't allow dogs at the Saturday market. Um, and at this time, we're asking for no other live animals either. Um, let's, we will have extra hand stations and we'll have hand sanitizer stations around the market that we are encouraging you to use. <laughs> Um, let's see, keep your distance. We really need to focus on keeping people socially distant and even in line, just stand away from each other. Um, and then six, know what you want before you get there. So hopefully everybody is kind of aware of what kind of products are out. We will have our fresh sheet going out every week on Thursdays, I believe, so that you can know what types of product will be at the market. So it should be a little bit easier. Um, and then as we go through um, like number seven, you touch it, you buy it. <laughs> we just are asking you to, a lot of the vendors probably won't even allow customers to touch things right now. We've kind of asked them to put um, stuff, policies in place where they have vendors touching the product and taking the, you know, bagging it up for you. So um, one thing that we are changing this year, at least for the time being, is we're not issuing red tokens. So if you have a debit or credit card, you can use those directly at the uh, stand at each booth. We will still be issuing EBT tokens, and we received a grant this year from the uh, from the Idaho Farmers Market Association, and they are um, funding our Double Up program. So if you have an EBT card, you're welcome to come by the manager's booth and get your tokens for that. Um, and then number nine, we, we will have our food court vendors there and we encourage you to support those vendors, but to take your food home, you know, grab it on your way out and take it home to eat it. Um, and then just be patient with us. We're all kind of trying to navigate this and until we know what it really is going to look like with customers in and how many people are coming, we don't really know what else we need to put into place. And so I think the best thing is to just be patient with us <laughs> and thank you. Great, thank you, Natalie. Um, yeah, I know there's been a lot of activity on the Facebook page of people expressing a lot of enthusiasm and excitement about the market. So um, anyway, good luck. <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> um, okay, I wanted to introduce our last um, guest, which I guess you already have met, Colette Phelps, and she works for the University of Idaho, and she's an extension educator and works with small farms. And um, she's going to be talking a little bit more about how you can um, get this farm fresh food from, you know, thinking about it from a safety perspective primarily. So over to you, Colette. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, tonight, I just want to talk a little bit about COVID-19 and just kind of go over what we know based from the science about this respiratory disease and then what you can do as a customer to keep yourself safe and also to keep the farmers and the other shoppers at the markets or the farm stands you're going to safe. So COVID-19 is a respiratory virus. It's spread through person-to-person -person contact via respiratory droplets. So that means that it can be coughing, sneezing, talking, possibly breathing. And that's why it's really important to social distance when you're at any market and make sure that there's six feet at least between you and other customers and at any time possible between you and your farm vendors. COVID-19 may be spread by touching a contaminated surface and then touching your mouth or your nose or your eyes, but this is not the primary method of infection. The virus does not grow on surfaces, but it does survive on surfaces between 24 hours to two to three days, depending upon the type of surface. So what we do know is that it can survive for up to 24 hours on cardboard and two to three days on plastic and stainless steel. And this is why the sanitation protocols that the producers tonight have talked about are really important. And it's also why it's so important that what you bring to market is also something that you've made sure is clean and sanitized if possible. This is not a foodborne pathogen. And so it is extremely unlikely that someone will be infected through eating. And to date, we don't have any documented cases that we know have come through 
eating food. So I think that's really good news for all of you that love local food. However, the, this virus can be spread by people who are not showing symptoms. And so the precautionary steps that we ask you to do, we ask you to do those even if you feel fine. Uh, the CDC has recommended that everybody wears a mask and make sure that that mask fits properly. So the CDC is the Center for Di Disease Control. And that is a really great source of up-to-date information about what we know. What we know about this virus is changing as we have more research results and as more people have gone through the life cycle of this virus. So definitely please watch for what they say to be the best practices because they will evolve. The number one thing you can do as a customer is wash your hands and make sure that you really wash them well using a protocol that is going to remove, like break down that virus and remove it from your hands. So it's really important to wash your hands before and after you visit the market, the farmer's market, a farm, or a pickup location. And you really need to scrub your hands for a minimum of 20 seconds. You've probably heard sing the happy birthday song two times. Make sure you use soap and water. You rinse with running potable water and that you dry your hands. And one thing is to think about is that when you do dry your hands, if you can use that paper towel to use off or to turn off the, the handles and open the door if you're in any public spaces, that's really important for not recontaminating your hands. It's also important to understand that hand sanitizer is not a replacement for hand washing. Sanitizer only works on a clean surface, so you have to clean your hands and then sanitize them. So it's really great that before you enter like the Kootenai County Farmers Market, you have an opportunity to wash your hands. So if you are coming to a place that doesn't have a hand washing station that you can use, wash your hands before you get in the car or walk over and then use hand sanitizer when you're entering. So if that's available, that's perfect. Also, it's really important that the hand sanitizer that you use is effective on this virus. And so we recommend that you only use commercially produced hand sanitizers that contain greater than 60% alcohol. And the reason for this is because there's a lot of recipes out there that you'll find on the internet for homemade sanitizers, but there's no way to test that those are greater than 60% alcohol and they have to be greater than 60% alcohol to be effective with this particular virus. So when you're at, at market, the best thing you can do is follow the signs and the procedures that the market or your pickup site has put out for you to follow. So they're gonna have those posted, they're gonna be letting you know by email and social media. So please cooperate with what they're laying out because that's for your safety and the safety of other customers and for the vendors as well. Stay home if you or someone in your household feels sick. It's so tempting to go out. Oh, I just feel a little bit off. Don't go out. What we know is that this virus is highly contagious. And so stay home. And if you know that you've been in contact with somebody that has been ill, stay home. That is super important. When you are out, you can see in this picture, people are maintaining a social distancing of at least six feet in line. Don't linger. You know, just make sure that you're in and out. We love the social aspects of local food, whether that's talking to our farmers or talking to the other customers, enjoying the atmosphere. But this year is not the year to do that. And if you are concerned with the behaviors of others, distance and return into line or to that vendor after they've left. It's really important that we are as kind as we can and as cooperative, but conflict's really not gonna help in this situation. And if you have a concern, you can bring that up to the market manager or the farmer after you've left the site. A couple other things is that have a backup plan for pickup or delivery in case you or someone in your family becomes ill. This is going to really help you not feel tempted to go out or ask for delivery. Emily talked a lot about all the delivery options that they have. So if you're not feeling well, 
call up, ask for a delivery, and definitely avoid interaction with that delivery person. And you can do this in any delivery situation. You can schedule a delivery time. You can, if the delivery time is kind of broad, let's say it's an hour or two hours between noon and two, then ask for a phone call. Um, so you get a phone delivery confirmation. If, if you can, prepay online or, you know, leave a check or bring a check and a pen so that you can write it there. The less transaction that we're having, even though it's unlikely that we're gonna have this transfer through services, it is possible. So in any way that you can limit, you know, transferring different items is very, very important. If you do have a drop point at your home, leave a cooler or another container out for the drop off. And that way that you're not gonna have to open your door. There's gonna be a safe place for that food to go. And that's going to be the best situation. Um, and then don't expect producers to accept used containers for like, like used egg cartons. Some of the things that we would usually turn back to our producers or we would use at market, like our reusable market bags, it may be that a producer says that's, that's not okay this time. We really need to be packaging things more so that we can protect you and we can protect ourselves. So if you can be understanding and accepting of the extra packaging, that's going to be really helpful for everyone. And we do know that so many of us that go to market, we try to limit packaging, especially plastic. But this is just a really hard thing to do this year in this particular health crisis that we're having. And if you have suggestions, contact your farmer, your farmer's market between market days. Again, on site is not the time to engage in a conversation about what could be done differently. But farmers and market managers, they really appreciate your feedback and your ideas. So when you go home, definitely send them an email or figure out a, a time on non-market day to give them a call and share any suggestions or concerns that you have. So that's all I had, Terry, about the kind of best practices for health and safety with local food at this time. But again, definitely check back with the CDC and make sure that you're following Governor Little's state mandates as Idaho rebounds, because there's a whole process that we're, we're in the middle of right now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Great, thank you, Colette, that was really helpful. Um, strange times we're living in, so I guess we have to do things really differently than we, when we're used to. So new habits need to be formed. Um, so at this point, um, I wanted to open it up to see if anybody has any questions that you want to put into the uh, Q&A. Um, somebody did hear, uh, put in a question earlier about um, is there a way to get some kind of contact, you know, emails, the con uh, get contact information on um, the CSAs and other people who are participating. Um, and we, we actually didn't have a plan for how, how to do that. I will tell you that with the Panhandle Farm Corridor that there are going to be rack cars available that we're going to list, um, have a map with all the farms that are participating on that. So that will be coming out shortly and be available at various venues around the community and um, the county um, and as well as on the web. So that's what I can say about that. And I know the farmer's market, um, everybody's listed on there. Um, and in terms of getting access to other CSAs, um, sadly, in our area, there are not a lot of options. And the only other one that I'm aware of that was going to have a full season of produce, full produce, um, has already filled their CSA. So. Um, I think that when people became aware of the COVID-19 situation, people sort of hopped on it and um, reached out to their favorite farmers to see if they could somehow work out a deal. So um, I don't know, Colette, do you have any other suggestions about how we could get um, this contact information out to everybody? Um, I, I do know that there's many farms also listed like on the um, different farmers markets around the region. They list their farm vendors on IdahoFoodWorks.com. 
farmsnetwork.org website, we've just launched a map that shows the farms that we know of in the 10 northern counties. So you can go there and you can um, have an interactive Google map. If you know of a farm that is not on that map, you can send me an email and we will add it. So those are a couple of ways that I know that you can find local farms. And I would also think that you could reach out to the farmers that are on this a webinar tonight because they're going to be connected and if you're looking for a specific product they can help you find it as well as Natalie as being the market manager she's really in touch with a lot of different producers and value-added food vendors so if you're looking for something I think your network is really strong it's at idahofoodworks.org or com or it's idahofoodworks.org Work. Okay, on post, I'm going to print that in the, or put that in the. Um, Larry, I've also added it to the that. chat for folks to uh, be able to click on Oh, this okay, there it is. Okay, great. Um, yeah, does anybody else have any questions or do any of the panelists have anything else that, you, that came to your mind that you want to add? Maybe you didn't think of at the time. Um, Terry, I, one of the things that I would love to hear before we wrap up is I'd like to hear about from each of the panelists, what is one of the things that they're most excited about with this market season? Okay, should we just go like, how about Emily, you want to start? Sure. Um, well, I'm just, you know, it's been so different this year like the safety net of our typical sales channels have changed that it's been stressful on you know how are we going to sell everything that we're producing how are we going to get it to our customers um, and people who aren't customers yet um, so it's definitely been a challenge to kind of work through things um, but now like our CSA filled up and we have our systems working with the deliveries and with the pickup and I feel like we're able to you know meet our customers where they are right now which is such a blessing that we can still be um, such a asset to our community and not just be shut down during this time so like, I'm just so excited that I can still be showing up with local food and eggs and beer because, you know, we all need that to get through <laughs> some of these days. Um, and I was like, before this webinar, I was out um, doing dirt work. I was getting my lettuce beds prepped and planting some peas and, you know, the sun's out and there's dirt on my face and like that's the life I love and just the opportunity to keep doing that right now um, I just feel super privileged and I'm excited to be a part of the community who wants to be purchasing local and finding their farmers and knowing where their food's coming from so I am just super grateful for all of you who showed up tonight and want to get something local and support the farmers in our region um, because without you we couldn't do what we love to do um, and we just want to get you nutritious and flavorful and fresh produce and more beyond all that good stuff but uh, I guess that's kind of what where I'm at in uh, this time okay so Lisa or Betty, do one of you guys want to respond to? Well, I have two things that I'm just brimming with joy about is um, sharing my passion, our family's passion, our um, generational family's passion of, of regenerative ranching and educating people about healthy soils, healthy foods, um, and what that means for the pollinators, what what that means for nutrient-dense food. So I am um, so excited about 
customers coming out here and learning how regenerative agriculture, what it is, how, it, how we work with nature, not against it. And then the second thing is giving birth, being one of four co-founders of the um, Pan Handle uh, Farm Corridor. And it's just been a pleasure to work with um, all of the co-founders and giving birth to this venue of customers coming to the farm. And, and we just really think that, that um, it's going to be a good fit with social distancing, um, with um, you know, being hand washing and sanitized, that it's, it's really going to work well under, during this time of the coronavirus. So those are the two things that um, I, I am so um, filled with joy and passionate about. Thank you, Betty. How about you, Lisa? Do you want to say anything? Yeah, so Terry and Colette, we're just really thankful for the effort that you've put forth to make this possible tonight. And also, we definitely really look forward to the upcoming season at this time of year. We like eating frozen blueberries, but we really like eating them fresh. So they just have so much flavor and we all have our favorite varieties. And as they ripen, we get to eat, eat the varieties as they come along and we're always glad for that. And I also always look forward to fresh produce. It just tastes so much better when it's right out of the dirt. So mm -hmm. anyway, we just really look forward to everything that's coming up. Thank you. Thanks guys. Yeah, well, um, and I and I wanted to bring to everybody's attention. Um, I wrote a response back to um, Dennis's question about uh, getting the list of um, people who are going to be part of the um, Panhandle Farm Corridor. So those are all going to be listed on. We're going to be having a website that's going to go up very soon with a map and all of that contact information on it and also rack cards that will be distributed throughout the region. So look for those coming soon. Um, I don't recall, Betty, did you say when um, the first day is for the, did you give that information when it's going to start? Um, I don't recall, but I think um, I may have, but it's, it's May, beginning May 30th through October okay. 1st. And as um, the seasons, uh, each crop could be, you know, happens in its own season. So, um, but beginning May 30th is our opening. Um, and the rack card will have the maps, but, and we will have a website listing, listing all of the farms, ranches, and producers. And we'll probably have a countdown on our Facebook page or even our website page. Um, as they become available with um, our opening day. It'll be a big day when we have, uh, when we start on Saturday, May 30th. Great. Okay, fun. We'll all have to remember our practice our social distancing in case everybody decides to go to the farm stands that day. <laughs> That'd be great. But there's quite a few of them. So I think it'll be, I think that's one of the things that's so great about that farm corridor is that it will allow a large number of people to go to, you know, there's so many farms and I don't think it's going to be um, a problem for dealing with social distancing. So that's cool. So um, if, unless anybody else has anything they want to add, um, can anybody want to say anything else or no? Thank you. Okay. I just wanted to um, say thank you all for all the, for your time and being willing to take some time to share. I know this is a super busy time for farmers to be doing anything other than growing your crops or raising your animals. So I really appreciate your willingness to come on here and share. Um, and thanks to everybody who attended this. Hopefully you can spread the word to people. I think, um, you know, one of the things that's become clear to me is um, there's really a a dearth of information about how to get local food here beyond the farmer's market. So um, part, of, part of my impetus for wanting to organize this was to help get the word out to people. Um, so to Dennis's point, I think, yeah, we need to do some more work to help get that, to get the word out because there's way more farms 
that aren't even represented on this webinar um, who are selling fantastic local food. So um, and we really do need to be supporting small farms these days. So anyway, thank you to everybody um, for your support and for your time. And I also want to do a shout out to Mackenzie Lawrence, who's been working behind the scenes to keep things moving here smoothly from a technical standpoint, not my forte. So thank you, Mackenzie. <laughs> And um, also to Colette for all of her time, your time and support for making this happen. So um, thank you, everybody. Stay safe and enjoy your local food and love your farmer. Support your local farmers and have a great evening. Thank you, Bye -bye. Terry.